guys, how are you all doing this morning? I know last week we missed. Um, I was in the middle of Western Maryland on the family farm and having an absolute blast. Um, social media connection to Wi Fi, things like that, not really uh, ideal at the time. So, you know, of course, data break. To do our first. All right, <clears throat> Kinsey's helping with us today. And I'm not quite sure what happened with Android. There was another update over the last week, and now my phone will twist. So if if you know what's up, you know how to fix it, can you let me know? <laughs> I'm signed into Facebook. I'm going to pull up the group so that I know who's chatting, because um, that obviously is still an issue. Okay, there we go. All right, awesome. Okay, so today what we're going to talk about, we're going to catch up from last week, and then I woke up with my rant today, so it seems like the perfect time to talk self-care, which we were going to talk about anyway, because summer heat, inflammation, da 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 right? Um, <clears throat> and I want you, <laughs> I am all over the board, because I have so many ideas for this topic. So I'm going to try and stay on track. Um, the the biggest thing I can tell you about summer heat and inflammation is one of two things happening. It either makes it better, meaning less painful, less impactful in your world, you feel a little bit better, you feel like you have a little bit more energy, or it goes the exact opposite way. It just depends. And there's a couple of key components that you want to pay attention to within your diet, within your self-care practices, um, you know, just things that you would normally do on a regular basis, so like exercise, meditation, things like that. Some of those may have to shift a little bit. Um, it just kind of depends, and you know your body. You need to start listening because Texas is now in 90-degree temps. Um, coming from Maryland, guess what? They were in 90-degree temps too. So summer's here, folks. It is here. And it's time for you to be ready to deal with summer in whatever way you need to, okay? So, grab your coffee. Let's get started, shall we? All right, so number one thing I can tell you about inflammatory conditions and summer heat. Dehydration. Dehydration is actually key. Um, as well as hyperhydration. There are people who are on medication for various autoimmune conditions, but they're always thirsty. They're never satisfied. Their body never feels hydrated, even though it could be very well hydrated. So you have the concern of being hyperhydrated, which effectively is just having too much water in your body, and your electrolyte pH balance is out of whack. Right, so you can go dehydration, you can go up the excess. Two spectrums. In anything we deal with in the human body, there are two spectrums, and somewhere along the way, you've got to find that balance. Okay, it's going to go up, it's going to go down in either direction. You have to find the balance for you. So during the summertime, especially in Texas, because we have like 20 degrees of, or 20 different summer seasons, and they usually end in hell. <laughs> and if you live in the South and you live in Texas, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We are not going religion here. This is literally just how it feels. It gets over 100. Um, Arizona, New Mexico, you guys deal with the same thing. Nevada, um, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. I mean, we all deal with these high temps in the summer. But we live here because we like it. I would rather deal with the heat than I would winter. So that's what keeps me in the South. Um, a couple of things that you can really look at when it comes to making sure that you're well hydrated in the summer is your electrolytes. What I typically tell people is you want about six ounces of some sort of electrolyte drink. I am not talking Gatorade, I am not talking Powerade, or any of the other number of mass production on the planet. Okay, I'm not going to go into detail here. Um, 
because <laughs> I don't want to get flagged. Um, but I will say this. If you drink any of those, read the label. Just read the label. Tell me what all those ingredients mean. The original Gatorade was, um, it was created basically out of a citrus beverage. And uh, they added salt and sugar to it, right? So effectively, what I tell my clients is have some lemonade and sprinkle some salt in it. Strong lemonade, freshly made lemonade, put some salt in it. You have a natural electrolyte drink. You don't need more than six ounces of it. Those big, huge, like 16 ounce, 32 ounces, you don't need that. Um, that can actually throw you into hyperhydration, especially when you are dealing with a, um, an autoimmune or chronic illness that automatically dehydrates you. Sending yourself into the opposite direction is not as healthy either. Um, and this, this background is kind of distracting me, just heads up. We had some work done while I was away, and we have not put the house back together yet because they're supposed to come back. Um, yeah. So it, it's been a morning of like one, one issue after the other. So back to your electrolytes. So now when your electrolytes are out of whack, what happens? The flow within your lymphatic drainage system, the flow within your circulatory system. It doesn't, it does not flow, okay? The goal is to allow your body to flow, right? To let all of its good just flow through your body. And you would think heat, Basically, melt ice lets water flow, right? There are three stages to it. You heat it up, it becomes, it goes from solid to liquid, right? But then if you keep heating, that liquid becomes steam, right? It evaporates. Our bodies are no different, okay? It's a it, different process, obviously, but those stages still exist where you can go from healthy flow to stagnation because of cold or stagnation because of heat, right? The body wants to cool its processes, right? It wants to cool itself, so it's going to slow things down. It's not going to ramp things up. Um, one of the symptoms of dehydration is that you feel sluggish. The very first one, though, is your hands and your feet kind of swell a little bit. Um, you might get a little headache, you might feel a little dizzy. Breathing sometimes for people is very difficult in, in high heat. That can be a sign of dehydration if, if you are not already struggling to breathe. Um, if you're doing a, a run, for instance, and this is a good example for some of you who've done this. Um, if you go out and you train for, you know, a mile, fun run, three mile, whatever, or you just go out walking, just for shits and giggles, and you find that you've gone 15, 20 minutes and then your hands are swollen. Like swollen to the point that you can't get your rings off. Okay? Scary swollen. If you get into a cold temp, if you rehydrate yourself, add a little bit of electrolyte, within the same amount of time, your hands will go back to normal. What that is, is that's your body trying to figure out a way to start cooling itself. Okay, so it's going to hold on to that water. It's going to create some swelling to try and create some air. Not to, not to pack it on like in the winter to warm you up. Now it's trying to reverse that process and cool you down. It's why electrolytes are so important. Now, do you have to drink lemonade as an electrolyte? No, there are actually a number of foods that act as electrolytes, right? Effectively, what you're looking for is pH balance. And I have some of you out there currently going, oh, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar creates pH balance within your gut. This is different. What you're looking for, the vinegar, while it will help and it can act as an electrolyte, you want that fermentation. So apple cider vinegar added to like an iced tea, for instance, a um, teaspoon of it with eight ounces, it can absolutely be very helpful at restoring electrolytes and allowing your body to create that balance 
to establish healthy hydration levels versus an excess or a depletion. It's not one I would recommend though. There's actually better options out there. So pickles, pickle juice, coconut water, uh, pineapple, pineapple juice, orange juice, freshly pressed. Um, eating oranges, that's why orange slices are so popular at sporting events. So if you feel like you're dehydrated, take an orange, break up the slices, sprinkle a little salt on it, and enjoy. Grapefruit, lemons, limes, it doesn't matter the citrus, same concept, okay? It works every single time, and what you really want to go for is something that you're craving, something cold, something refreshing, something that your taste buds and your brain are going to go, oh, we want more of that. You don't have to take an orange and every single time you eat it, sprinkle the salt on it. Once a day. Remember, you only need about six ounces. So six ounces is literally just half the orange. That's it. Um, using things like sea salt and Himalayan salt will help add an extra, an extra little boost of magnesium and potassium. Helps with cramping because cramping is big with dehydration. Um, Charlie horses are going to be one of the symptoms that you encounter if you're dehydrated. And typically this will happen overnight while you're sleeping, your body is, is at rest. Um, and um, Charlie horses don't have to just happen in the calves. It can happen in the feet. They can happen in the arms. They can happen in the hands. If you have RA or arthritis, um, fibro, a lot of times you'll get Charlie horses in your hands, okay? And the best way to do it to, to alleviate them, obviously, is to restore that magnesium, potassium, right? Top sources of that, the highest sources, or I guess most commonly recommended sources, um, peanut butter and bananas. But seeds are amazing as well. So pumpkin seeds, for instance, have a high level of protein. They are the one of the highest protein content foods or plant-based foods. Um, pumpkin seeds contain the greatest volume of protein and amino acids among all of the plants. All the foods that come from the ground, pumpkin seeds, if you need to boost your, your um, protein, that's the way to do it. Potassium and magnesium are found within seeds, they're found within nuts. So you do not have to have peanut butter. You do not have to have peanuts. You can have whatever else you want. If you have an issue with nuts, go for the seeds. Okay? Um, squash, cruciferous foods, uh, bananas, avocados, things like that. They're all going to have some magnesium potassium as well. And it really comes down to a wide variety of diet to help you maintain those pH balance and the electrolytes. And I know I'm harping on electrolytes, you guys, but it's a key. If you find yourself out somewhere, it doesn't matter where, if you're, let's say you're in an amusement park this summer, water park, whatever. Um, and you feel dehydrated, you're starting to get a slight headache, limbs are starting to get a little, uh, or your digits are starting to get a little swollen. You use what you have, okay? So you go to the counter, and the only thing that they have, they don't have lemonade, they don't have pickles, all they have are your mass market, your Gatorade, your power, or whatever. I don't like the ingredients, but it still works. And if you're dehydrated, you need what works. You need something immediate. Do not get into that position and then decide not to have the power of the Gatorade, whatever, simply because you don't have the ingredients. Because dehydration can turn deadly quick. Hyperhydration can turn deadly quick. You do not want a very good day to go sour, right? If that is your only option, four to six ounces, you're fine. Now say so you have to drink all 32 ounces, 
not saying you have to drink all 16, whatever the bottle is. Maintain your hydration however you are able to at that time because that overrides ingredients in a product that you're drinking once. Right? Outside of deadly allergies, you know, things that send you into anaphylactic shock. If you got to do it, you got to do it. If you don't like pickles, and that's what's there, but you need some help rehydrating your body, pickle shots, baby, minus the vodka. Birds and pickle shots. Got to do what you got to do to keep yourself healthy. And sometimes it just sucks. But you do what you got to do. Okay. So now electrolytes aside, there's a couple of other things to be to be concerned about. All right. Um, I mentioned amusement parks, water parks. Some of the things that happen during the summer is vacations, right? People go on vacations all the time. In the South, people go to water parks a lot. We go to the pool. We do things to keep ourselves cool. Hanging out in water is one of those things. Water can be dehydrating because it tricks your body into thinking because there's moisture and there's water on your skin that you're hydrating yourself. But the majority of water parks, pools, things like that out there have a lot of chemicals in them to keep bacteria down, to keep people from being sick so that the water is safe for multitudes of people to swim in. And at this point, post-COVID, you know they're going to be diligent. So you need to be aware of it, okay? Because while you're out having a good time, you're not paying attention and you're not necessarily mindful and there's nothing wrong with that until you hit the higher terms. So take a minute about once an hour, once every half an hour, depending on when you're out in the heat, and reevaluate just like you would with your sunscreen. If you're going to put your sunscreen on, look at where you are hydration wise, have a little bit of water, have a sip of an electrolyte, go for it. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention that is a really great electrolyte is the sparkling mineral waters. Excellent. I think smart water even have, has electrolytes in it. That can be an excellent alternative to you any of the mass market sports drinks, okay? Um, when, when you're in these water parks, when you're out having fun, and you're, you know, you're at the beach, you're wherever, take those moments. And like I said, once an hour, once every half an hour, it depends on where you are and what your heat level is, what your heat tolerance is as well, because we all have a tolerance. And we build those tolerances up or we deplete them just like you would an alcohol problem. You know, we're drinking alcohol. Eating sugar, any of those, you can eat more if you eat it more often. You can tolerate the heat if you're in it more often. Um, if you're getting ready to go on vacation, a good idea, especially if you know that you're going, like, let's say from the north to the south, a good idea is. So just go outside in the hottest part of the day. I'm not saying you have to be in sun. Don't get me wrong. Protect yourself um, from UV, UV rays. And, and let me say this. We need a good 10 to 15 minutes of UV rays a day without sunscreen. Doesn't mean you have to stand in the bright sunshine. You can get it standing in the shade. Okay. But just be aware that that is something that our bodies actually can use to metabolize vitamin D. But it also sparks some of our happy genes. Sunlight, being in nature, feet in the ground. We talked about grounding and putting our feet on actual earth a few weeks ago. It's all connected. All of that is connected to the same concept, okay? Um, so. If you're going from north to south and the temperatures where you're going are significantly different than where you're at, or let's say the humidity is different, 
go out during the hottest part of the day, spend about 15, 20 minutes there, or as much as you can handle, and then gradually increase that time so that when you go from home to vacation, it's not such a drastic shift. These drastic shifts impact cravings. They impact foods that your body wants at those times. You're not going to want comfort food when it's 100 degrees. You're going to want cooler foods. And this is where you want to look at the elements, okay? Traditional therapies, traditional medicine, um, things like Ayurvedic, um, I think even the Native American medicine, um, I know you know, tropical and traditional Chinese medicine, they look at elements. So if it's hot out and your body is hot, you need cooling foods. Not just cold, cooling. Okay? To keep it simple and easy, cooling foods are the foods that are easily digested. Okay? Doesn't mean you have to go vegan. Fish. Um, some chicken, poultry, game birds are cooling foods, okay, or can be. Um, dark leafy greens, bright leafy greens, so things like iceberg lettuce, there might not be a lot of micronutrient component within it, but iceberg actually contains a significant amount of water, as does cucumbers, apples, and watermelon. So, as your snacks, having cucumbers, apples, and watermelons ready to eat is really helpful. Going to help with absorption of the hydration, right? They're going to help maintain the heat and cooling stability within your body. Because when you have those drastic shifts, or even when it's not drastic and you've gone outside for a week or so every day just to try and acclimate your body, it can, someone's walking out front, it's driving me crazy. Um, it can mess with how hot or cold you feel. Now, I know there are some of you that like to wear the long sleeves, um, the covers for protection from the sun. Make sure you're wearing something that is designed to keep you cooler. They're out there. Are they expensive? In some cases, absolutely. But they're worth it. And if you're fighting any sort of autoimmune condition or chronic ailment that is painful, using a swim shirt, okay? And for the life of me, a rash guard. There we go. Thank you. Rash guard. Whew. 10 years of California. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, but wearing a long sleeve rash guard and the pants or the shorts can help you manage those fan filled conditions in the summertime when the heat is high because it'll help your body maintain its cool, right? It keeps it cooler. I'm beginning to think English and migraines kind of connect somehow. Um, <laughs> because some of these sentences, I'm just like, oh, I can't believe I said that. The rash guards will keep your body cool. What you want to make sure of as you're going and buying the rash guards, though, is that they're designed to keep you cooler. There are some that are actually designed to maintain heat. You don't want those. Those are winter gear. You want the summer gear. And right now, they're not going to be on sale. If they are, kudos for finding such a great deal. Um, but I can tell you right now, it is worth it. It is worth it. You would be very surprised the technology found within some of these rash cards. And if you can't find it, let me know. Um, I have some links within Amazon that I will put up later. Um, things that we have physically bought ourselves. And I, I don't know if they'll be on Amazon. They might just be on the internet. Um, but things that we bought ourselves and used, um, my husband still uses his when he goes out. You just smell on the lawn, he'll put it on. And it's because it's 100 degrees out and he wants to stay cool as he's doing it. 
the sun isn't a concern of his. It's more just keeping himself covered to, to stay cool. And that's crucial in the summertime for your heart, for your circulatory system, for your cardiovascular system. The cooler your body is able to stay, or at least perceptively stay, the easier it is for you to move about as you normally would without pain, without inflammation, without triggering a increase in inflammation. The goal is to maintain a decrease. If it is summertime and you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, if you start feeling kind of like life is blah, but you're doing all these other things, you need to look at exactly what you're eating, exactly what you're doing, because staying cooler requires that hydration. And it requires a diet that promotes the hydration. But I have seen with some clients over the years, what they end up doing is they're so focused on the hydration, they forget to eat enough. And then that's going to put you into what we've traditionally called starvation mode. Um, effectively, all it is is your body doesn't have enough fuel to do all the things it needs to do. So now you're in a depressant state because it's pulling all of its resources. Does that make sense? Um, I actually have a couple of things. There was an example I found on the internet. We're always using cars because people can relate. So in the summer, old cars, we used to have to worry about them overheating, right? Inside the cabin as well as outside. If you're in the south, you had a worry over the windows exploding because the inside temperature would get so hot, it would just explode, right? Or you're driving, you don't have enough antifreeze in your car, you don't have enough water, or before antifreeze it was water, um, to keep the engine cooler. I mean, think about way back when, in like the 1920s, when cars were first a thing, and it's hot out, and the engines are running, and then all of a sudden they stop running because they overheat. Stop it. You can't hear anything. We're complaining. You came in here. You have to listen for the rest. Mm -hmm. um, now, what would happen is you'd have to let it cool down, right? Let it stop steaming and add more water. So effectively, you're rehydrating the engine. Um, that's what you're doing here. You have to make sure you have flow within your body. You need to pay attention to your symptoms, especially you guys if you're dealing with any sort of chronic pain. Because like I said at the beginning, it can go one of two ways. It can get significantly better or it can get significantly worse. And the difference is how you treat yourself all the other times of the day, the remaining 24 hours from that moment that you're feeling. Summertime, it is more crucial to pay attention to eat the hydration in the way that your body feels as it's moving. Be mindful of that. We are more apt to, to stop paying so much attention. Get around. We're enjoying life. We're not stuck in the house in the wintertime. We don't have to pile up on clothes to make sure we have shoes on. We can just Go outside. That freedom opens us up to forget what we've been doing. And I'm not saying you have to be extremely diligent 100% of the time. You guys know my focus is not to have food and health be the primary obsessive focus. Living life should be the focus. Health should be what you do, and managing your health should be what you do to allow you to. Live life should not be the sole focus. Is it an important and crucial element? Of course, you don't have health, you don't have you, right? But it doesn't necessarily mean that 
you have to focus 100% of the time. If this is your first summer after finally finding balance, finally getting to the point where your body is healing, you're going to want to pay extra attention this, this summer. Be mindful more often than you otherwise would be. Once you get your systems down and your practices down, then you just rinse and repeat. That's it. If this is your first summer, write things down. When something goes well, write it down. And make sure you put it in a place that you can find it when summer comes next year. Otherwise, you're going to spend the first couple of years reinventing the wheel. Versus, here's my first summer. Let me be mindful this summer. Figure out what works, what doesn't work. And then next year, start with those things. Start with the things that work. And each year, it will get easier and easier, just like everything else. Over time, it becomes second nature. It becomes a primal instinct. Your brain goes, oh, summer is here. It's been hot for more than three or four days. It's becoming consistent. Here's what we need to crave. We need our melons. We need our citrus. We need our berries. Where's those cucumbers? Where are the cucumbers? And yes, your brain craves cucumbers. Think of what? If getting into electrolytes is a struggle, if maintaining hydration is a struggle because drinking water is a struggle for you, now is an excellent time to start using infused water. And I'm going to challenge you this month. I want you to get creative. And I'll put it up in the group. Get creative. Start infusing things in your water. Put some cucumber and mint in there. Put some spiciness in there. A little bit of cayenne pepper. That kick of spice is kind of like a kickstart to your body, whether it's wintertime or whether it's summertime. It, it wakes up your senses, okay? Peppermint, the smell of peppermint wakes up your senses because it's potent. It's strong, right? Like a kick in the pants. That is what you're looking for. And then once you get the kick in the pants, take Stability, health, happiness, balanced. You're keeping the pain at bay. You're keeping all of the information at bay. And by using strategies like including electrolytes um, and, you know, foods that will help you stay hydrated, infused waters being one of them, you're going to able, you'll be better able to maintain that balance. And the husband is home with a fever in the main cave, so I'm on the opposite end of the house. And I have not been in my office in a while. I, I can see why. I can't wait for the house. The houses are almost done. I cannot wait. Can't wait. All right, so the very last thing I want to talk about is exercise during summer. If you're dealing with a painful condition, this is the time I recommend working out in a pool. Work out in water. Everything that you do on land, you can do in water. I used to teach uh, my clients, I would have aqua sessions. I had one who was, I mean, she was so inventive. She would find things on the internet and say, can we try this? Absolutely. Let me do some research. I'll figure it out and we will do it. And she is the reason I know how to teach and train using aqua kickboxing. She got all the stuff and we did it. And it was, oh my gosh, you guys, it is so much fun. Even if you don't have any of the, the aqua gloves or the weights for your legs, even if you don't have any of that. Get into water. Do a couple of kickboxing moves. Those of you with knee issues, kickboxing in the water, it's a control movement over the back of your 
always supreme. There's resistance on both sides versus using weight or resistance bands where you only have one. So your contraction or your extension, depending on how you're activating your muscles, dictates where the resistance is, right? In water, it's everywhere. Not only is it cushioning all of your joints and your movements, it's creating resistance in every single capacity. So, if you are dealing with any painful condition, I highly recommend getting into the water to exercise this summer. And yes, exercise is essential to managing pain conditions. It doesn't mean you have to go out and do a full hour long care practice class. You want to start slow. If you have not exercised to this point, you start slow. Any painful conditions, autoimmune conditions, you do not want any drastic shifts. We've talked about this in the past. Drastic shifts creates a temporary increase in inflammatory conditions and symptoms. There is a way to slowly incorporate all of these things into your life, these healthier habits, without triggering any temporary increase in inflammation whatsoever, and to actually decrease your inflammatory symptoms as you're improving. But the number one recommendation for that, go slow. Start with the five minutes. Start with 10 minutes. Get some water shoes. Walk in the water. Make sure you're moving your arms. Okay, get down below your shoulders. You want water about right here. Just walk. If you haven't done it before, you won't make it fun. Don't stress it. Very first week. Very first week. It's only like miracles. Miracles happen over time with persistence, dedication, and with consistency. And if you need help trying to figure out how to incorporate exercise in the summer without triggering an inflammatory condition or being impacted by the weather, let's check. I would much rather have a conversation with you than have you go out, try things on your own, and end up either hurt or frustrated. Frustrated is actually worse than hurt because when you're frustrated, trying to overcome that mindset, it's the whole, I tried it, it went south, not for me. It may not be that it's not for you. It may be that you just needed to take a step back and do things a little differently. Um, with summer, it, it's tricky, especially in the south because of the high heat. You can work out in the AC. People, you came in here, you got a sick. She's complaining. She she agrees. She agrees. Let's put it that way. She agrees. So back to it. You can you can work out you see, you can work out in the water. If working out in the water is something new to you, then then you want just a couple of answers to questions. You might have questions, you might have concerns. Um, talking about the electrolytes and how to stay, you know, well hydrated without overhydrating yourself. You might have questions. If you take on the infused water challenge, put your infusion in. I want you to be as creative about as absolutely possible. Any fruit and vegetable you can think of can go into water and infuse it. Now, obviously, infusing certain things aren't going to taste as good as others. But that's what experimentation is all about, right? All right, so I challenge you to infuse water. And uh, staying hydrated, healthy, and cool. <laughs> Cool is a key this summer, um, and any summer, really. 
make sure you acclimate yourself to the heat. Don't just go out for a whole day in 100 degree heat, y'all. Make sure you have your water. There are so many different containers now where you can keep your water cool. That's what you want. There are also rags that you can buy. Um, I think they're called Cool Max. Not quite sure. Uh, but you, you wet them. I was just watching TV yesterday and there's a hat. You wet the hat and you put it on your head and it stays cooler for longer. So when you have the cool rag, put it behind your neck. A good DIY, take a thin dishcloth, okay? Something that you would, you would clean your, or dry your, your uh, glasses, your glassware with, the thin ones. Take that, soak it in water with some peppermint drops in it, freeze it, freeze it, and then put it in your cooler, in like a Ziploc, you don't want it to, <laughs> you don't want the peppermint to get all over, um, and when you need it, swipe it on the back of your neck, the back of your neck is a sensor for your whole body, back of your neck and your feet. So, those are the two places to put your cold. The peppermint is going to stay on your neck, right? Even after you wipe it, so you wipe the ice across there, put it back in your cooler, all right? Um, or not the ice, but you wipe the, <laughs> you wipe the rag, the ice, what was created, <laughs> the frozen rag across the back of your neck. Peppermint will infuse on your neck and it stays cool. It's like it's like putting Bengay or Biofreeze on your body and how it tingles from it on your neck. Same thing. It opens up the blood vessels back here, so helps promote flow in your circulatory system, opens up the nasal cavity, right? Because menthol and peppermint is majority of chemical con constituents within peppermint. I menthol, so opens everything up, picks you up, perks you up, makes you happy, gets everything going, and now you feel cooler for a little bit of time. All right, you guys, that's all my suggestions I have for you today. I will include some notes down below in a little bit. Um, I last two weeks has been. Um, insightful to all of you single mamas out there doing it without any help. OMG. I only had a small glimpse of that. And um, you guys are goddesses. You are queens. You're strong. You're very courageous. And one of the things we're going to talk about next week, um, based on the last couple of weeks, is avoid getting stuck in mamahood and lose yourself. I don't know about you guys, but I watched um, a show called Pothville. The mom on the show was very strict as far as covering yourself. You know, um, interaction with others. I mean, just, just very strict household. And then this, this season, which just came out a couple weeks ago, She's discovered that she lost herself along the way. And I see it. I know how it's possible because with these guys, I see it. And there is a fine line that we walk. Men, women, transgender, doesn't matter who you are. You have children. There is a fine line that you walk. And I'm still learning because I'm, I'm, next month is, or this month is two years. So obviously I have a ways to go. But there's definitely a fine line between being the parent but being yourself, right? Not losing yourself in being the parent role. And being the parent and losing yourself in that because you're just, you're exhausted and you're overwhelmed and you're overstimulated. And it's really hard. The focus on anything else um, 
and I see it, especially the last couple of weeks. So I did a couple of things that will that that definitely helped. Um, exhaustion was top, <laughs> and and we'll talk about we'll talk about it all next week. Um, but I wanted to make sure to mention it because I know a lot of kids are coming out of school. Single moms are going to have them around a lot more. Um, single papas, single single parents. Period. So for all of you guys out there, next week we're going to chat about that. Um, this week starts a new menu. If you have not seen it, it is up. It is on the website. Just go to bewildhealth.com, click on recipes, and you will see June right at the very top. I think it's a couple of ladies smiling over watermelon. I think that's the image. Um, but click on that. You'll see all the recipes. You'll see, you see the meal plan to download, seasonal produce. Everything's right there for you. One of the things that I might start doing, and I'll put a poll about this out, is um, creating weekly shopping lists for the monthly meal plan. So let me know if you're interested in that. Um, let me know any questions for next week's topic or any concerns you might have, things that you might be dealing with. You're welcome to DM me, call me, text me. I put my stuff out there so you can always find me. And uh, I will chat with y'all later. Bye, guys. Have a great day.